Hello, welcome to another Talk of the Town. My name is Mo McNary. And I'm that Tom Wright's guy. And we're so glad that you stopped in today to spend, oh, what, 28 point something minutes with us. So thank like you. That. Nice to see everybody. Um, Tom, happy fall. It's officially here. We it can't deny here. it. Yes, we're in the in the throes of it all. Came quick. I know. So the kids are, how's school going for everybody? School's going great. Uh, Vera's riding the bus to school in the oh. kindergarten and she's loving it. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, back on that little gerbil wheel of exciting school stuff and yes. good. Let's talk about your exciting uh, wheel. You're on the, with the going to Miss oh, America yes. in Atlantic City. I got to tell you, that was really the thrill of a lifetime. Not Never on my bucket list, but I'm so happy that I went and I can check it off my bucket list now. I uh, had the great opportunity to go to the 2016 Miss America pageant in New Jersey, where it's yeah. held almost every year. And um, representing our beautiful state, of course, is Miss Minnesota Rachel Latif, who will be a guest yes. with us later today. We're very excited. And it was just something else. So I can't wait to see Rachel again and hear what she has to say, because she has a different take on things. But it was just great. We were so, so, so proud of her, not only representing Hastings, but representing our state. I yep. gotta ask, how did you, how did you, how did you make that tie with Rachel and like make the trip with her and everything? Did you guys just, you just had this crazy idea? You ran by her, and when you guys are, you know, powdering your noses in the restroom, or how'd that happen? You know, I will let actually let her tell you that story because it's oh. a very cute story. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you know what? Um, when I was there, of course, everyone has these beautiful smiles, yeah. and of course, you do too. But um, it doesn't c come without a cost, is what I hear. Oh. <laughs> tell me more. Oh yes. <laughs> I do have a, a dental lesson for you all at home that I just learned. Um, Should we pause and go get something to write this down on? Yeah. No, I don't think it's TV. pretty simple. Okay. Floss. <laughs> floss. Yeah, I, I'm not a good flosser, I confess. Okay. So I went to the dentist and it turns out um, I have this periodontal disease thing and that's from not flossing and it's gotten to the point where I have to have surgery on one of my teeth. What? That like they go in and clean my gum my gum line around the what tooth the heck? and like reset it so it's lower and so Tom. and it's going to cost over six hundred dollars and that's Be after insurance oh. yeah so what else is going on around the town because well, you I, always know i do know mo of course oh. i do know here we go i have got some i do have some taut headlines for you and the headlines where you get name brand news at a generic price oh great deal yeah first the stage is set there will be a candidates forum for this year's school board elections uh, the local AAUW will host the forum on Monday night, October 26th at St. Philip's Church. Okay, great. Coming right up. Uh, their questions will be directed at the six candidates vying for the five open seats. Uh, they include incumbents Vince O'Brien, Lisa Hedin, and then there's the two complicated backstory appointed incumbents, Russ Roloff and Andy Bertram. Yes. Um, and then two new names have filed as well, Valerie Hall and Joe Becker. So there you go. Um, the candidates paid uh, just two dollars to file, but you know what? We are going to charge zero. It's going to be free for folks to see it because we're going to play it or record it on HGTV and That's replay fabulous. it and put it on YouTube. That's great for free. Well, so. I really respect people that step up and say they want to help out. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So it'll be a good, good uh, forum there. Next, our Regina Hospital has found a new leader. Did you hear about this? Uh, yes, I did. Did you apply? I thought you would apply for this no, one. No, I did not. No, his name is Tom Thompson, and here he is. Tom was the president and CEO of Samaritan Healthcare in Moses Lake, Washington. The degrees on his wall include a Master's of Public Health, Community Health Planning, and Administration from St. Louis University. Tom was also the captain of the swim team, the golf team, and no surprise, the first aid team in college. And uh, his first day at Regina has not been set, but when that day does come, welcome to Hastings, Tom. Yes, that's yeah, great. Pretty cool. Tom Thompson. Tom Thompson. Great first name, I gotta mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Finally, we end with some big news for HCTV and Hastings. You know uh, about NATOA? Uh, do tell. Yeah. Well, they are the National Association of Telecommunications Officers and Advisors. Say that five times fast. Every year they have a conference where stations like ours from across the country meet up to learn, network, and partake in some awards. And this year, HCTV earned four awards. <gasps> Yes. First of all, Take, as we call him now, <laughs> or Take a Hike Mike, as he's better known, won third place in Use of Humor. Way to go, Mike. Or Take, Yay. sorry. Yes, Take. Michael Campa's short film substitute, Stan Sanders, won seconds in Arts and Entertainment. Unbelievable. Congratulations. Yes. 
Uh, HGTV overall won second place in programming excellence. Pretty cool. Pretty huh? cool. And I gotta say, this is the one I'm I'm most proud of. I have to admit. You know, you don't like to pick your children, like, but this one I have to say. I'm, or I'm your nose. Uh, no, we don't want to do that either. We got first, number one in the country, Mo. Unbelievable. In best use of outdated picture of radio station owner. <laughs> right here. You know what? <laughs> Dan, you own a piece of this too. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Those are the Todd headlines, folks. You have now been informed. Oh my gosh. And we will be right back. Yes. Exactly. The limit does not exist. Very good. All right. Make sure you study for the test tomorrow. Hey, group. Uh, we're having the party tonight at my house. Uh, we're going to get maybe a bit turned. Do you want to come? Um, I don't know. I really want to go, but I should probably study. Sorry, I got to study for the test. Yeah, well, your loss. <laughs> Responsibility. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We now send you to the place where they grill onions, a.k.a. The Onion Grill in Hastings. There we go. All right, here to get the Talk of the Town here at the Onion Grill. And look what we found. Look at this table. We got Mr. David Younger, D. Hastings Bridge Watch guy himself. How you doing, Dave? Very good, thank you. And who is this lovely lady with you here at the table? This is my wife, Valerie. Well, hello. Wife Valerie, what is the talk of the town here in Hastings? The talk of the town here in Hastings is, well, there's a lot of things. There's the downtown, there's the car shows, there's um, the levee, a um, lot of stuff going on downtown Hastings that people should come down and check it out. Hello to you. Uh, my name is Mo, and um, I am just here because I would like to get the talk of the town. You folks sure are talking about something very exciting. I'll wait till you're done chewing. How's Thank that? You, yeah. So tell us, what is the talk of the town? Well, the talk of the town for me is I'm here visiting from California. I lived here 50 years ago and was active in the downtown area then. And uh, the town has grown. The town has changed. How long? So you've been gone 50 years? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So 50 years ago, the old blue bridge was the new bridge, wasn't it? It was. It was the new bridge. When I came back from Korea, that bridge was there and the other one was gone. What's the talk of the town? Well, we're from Bloomington, Minnesota, and we knew Bob and his family out in California. So we just drove down here to have lunch with him today. It's gorgeous. I love Hastings. I love the river. We lived in Marina and St. Croix years ago. And I don't know, there's something about river towns that very nice. What's the talk of the town? What's the talk of the town? More housing, more building, more growth. We're at the Onion Grill and we're gonna sneak in and see Wendy, who is here, is the owner of the Onion. And so we're gonna see if we can just sneak in and talk to her quick. Wendy, hello, I'm not wearing a hairnet. Hello. Wendy, I gotta tell you, the Onion Grill, such a great relaxing place, such a fun place, such an alive place. You do a lot of business upstairs for special events. What is the talk of the town? Ooh, the talk of the town. Well, the talk of the onion is we have a new fall menu that's rolling out here next week, but it'll have um, things like pretzels with beer cheese sauce and uh, kielbasa and all of those comfort fall foods that I'm sure your mother made and my mother made. So I'm bringing a little bit of her into my kitchen for the fall. I got to tell you the word on the street, the talk of the town that I've heard is this place has some people uh, or uh, spirits, shall we say. Do tell. Yes, let's say. We'll call them spirits, definitely. Um, I think almost 90% of the employees here have had 
an experience of some kind. I, I have to say I've had a few myself. They pop up um, at interesting times, sometimes when we're alone in the building, um, sometimes not. And what's something that you have experienced? Um, just recently, Cindy and I were um, here before we opened. I was in the kitchen, she was upstairs doing books and I was over by the grill area and the kitchen door opened and I, for a split second I thought in my head, I wonder why Cindy's wearing a red shirt today because our uniforms out there are blue or gray. And the door shut and I turned and there was no one there and Cindy did not have a red shirt on. But I did see someone come through the door. That just gave that just actually gave me a chill. What is your hidden secret here? Hidden secret. And let's, is it the talk of the town? I think it could be. Go. All right, let's go in the basement. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. When this was City Hall, okay, back yes. in the day, um, Charlie Rayfield, Max Rayfield, the Luckasier family, I'm sure you're familiar with those names. Yes. Okay, Golden Gloves Boxing for Hastings was in this basement. When we took over the building and started to clean out, we found the original ring and um, the original ropes. And I had um, a few of the boxers that have come down here said this was it, this was their setup. We just kind of leave it here very preserved because I think it's, it's a really cool part of Hastings history actually. That's the talk of the town. Well, there you have it. Uh, woo yes, uh, exactly. The Onion Grill, a great place in town. But you know what else? I am so excited. This is uh, this is. I, it's, we're not seeing a ghost. We're seeing the real live. Miss Minnesota is with us, fresh back from Atlantic City yes. in uh, New Jersey. Hello. Yes, Rachel <laughs> Latif is here, Hastings native. Rachel Latif, welcome to you. Thanks for having me. Look at her yes. great posture. Sit I up. know, I know. I'm, I feel like I need to. <laughs> well, I do have the leaning. I do you have, do the, have leaning the leaning. Here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Congratulations I, yes, thank on you. Miss Minnesota. That's thank so exciting. You. It's it, it is. It is incredible. And Rachel, it, you not only did such a great job representing Hastings, representing our whole state, and um, you and I had the great fortune of being out there together. And yes. Tom asked me, how did that come about? Yeah, Would what's you, the story there? Yeah, so she, Mo had interviewed me multiple times in my local titles. Yeah. And so when I was Miss Olmstead County, it was my last interview before Miss Minnesota, and I had said, you know, if I win this year, let's let's make a bet. If I win Miss Minnesota, then you have to come out and watch me at Miss America. And she had said, it's a bet. We shook on it and everything. And so when I was crowned, <laughs> she held up to her end of the bargain and wow. shook me on at Miss America. A promise made is a promise kept. Wow. That's yes. the way to live your life. So wow. it was so fun seeing her because oh I my think gosh. I saw her first during the Show Us Your Shoes Parade, which is a shoe that we create based off of our state. Okay. And so all of a sudden I see Mo with a hat on and she's like, <laughs> Rachel and I had to do a double take. <laughs> and and it, or was it one of these like, oh no, there she is again. No, it was it was good. We were all in the rain. I was just drenched, but it was one of the most one of my most favorite moments during my Miss America week. Rachel, you know, I don't think I know how you ever got involved in pageants in the mm -hmm. first place. Well, I, I didn't start until I was in college, really, with the Miss America organization. So I was never doing it when I was younger. There's no toddlers and tiaras here <laughs> by any means. And um, actually, the first pageant I ever competed in was the Miss Bayfront pageant, which is like Miss Duluth. And it was an outdoor pageant and kind of weird. We were getting ready in tents, <laughs> and I didn't win that, but I thought, okay, well, this can't be totally what the Miss America organization is about. So I did another one, and I competed. Uh, I won my first title, Miss Midwest Minnesota, in 2012. So I competed three times at the state level until I had won. And oh, that was a question I had. What is the difference this year? What made the difference for you on that? Why was it third time was yeah. a charm? It's a lot of his experience. It's incredibly difficult to win the state level your first time because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things being thrown at you and it's it's like a whole new world in a way and so you, you got to get to know how how it works and for me it was experience and I really didn't understand myself until I started teaching 
and that happened in 2014 was when I started teaching in my own classroom by myself and it was really those kids who inspired me to keep going and it really built my own integrity and character as a type of role model that I wanted to be. I wanted them to see, you know, if I could be Miss Minnesota, the places, the people that they're around and the places they're at doesn't define who they are or what they want to be. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the role of why I wanted to become Miss Minnesota in the first place. Uh -huh. So yes, as we mentioned, you're an arts teacher up in Cook, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And um, so education, no surprise, education is a big part of your platform. Yep. Uh, so a question for you on that is, so what would you say is the number one, should be the number one focus for education here? Yeah, I really think it's about focusing less on test scores and more so about mm. the heart of what it means to educate children. So focusing on holistic education where we're valuing art and music as much as we value technology and science and math because really what makes a good person isn't how smart they are with their test scores. It's about their integrity. It's about finding inspiration and feeling like they have a purpose in this world. And you're only going to get that purpose if you truly understand every aspect of who you are. So holistic education is how youth get there in the first place. Well, let's talk about your high school experience because it was in this very uh, this building, very not necessarily building. this yeah. room, yeah. but um, what are some of your great memories from Hastings High School? I, Who inspired you as a teacher? Mr. Casperson was a big inspiration for me because I was very artsy. I, I, I struggled a lot with my identity as a kid because I always felt like I was two different types of people. I felt that I was very artistic and kind of an art nerd, but at the same time I felt like, you know, I loved wearing color and I loved hanging out with my friends and you want this aspect of wanting to feel popular. But I struggled with who, who I was and I released a lot of my emotions in art and Mr. Casperson was always the teacher that accepted that and he let that thrive and so he was a big reason as to why I wanted to fuse art uh, into my own career and and I love children and teaching so why not combine art and inspiring youth so well you know Rachel this is going to open up a lot of doors for you and have you thought about your yeah. future well for me it's I've been able to earn scholarships as a result of competing and winning and I can also use that to pay off student loans so that's a big part for me wonderful and, and going towards grad school to get my great. master's in education good, is good. one step that I want to do well that's great, great. Mm -hmm. all right I think we're ready for some top five are you ready for us to go yeah. dig a little deeper so, here yes <laughs> oh the mood oh, yeah. just changed even this is intense this, this is like a Miss yes. America moment right here <laughs> you know what I yes if you've survived those questions I think you're fine uh, hit me we'll we're see. good we'll see all right <laughs> You had a cheeseburger named after you at Wyatt's. I did. Um, so the question is, if you could enjoy that cheeseburger with anyone in the world, oh. who would you pick to eat that cheeseburger with? I, it's so funny because I just went to Wyatt's yesterday. Oh, you did? <laughs> and he ate the burger again. Um, <laughs> who would I pick? Oh, yeah, that's really tough. I would want to pick a famous artist, someone like, do they have to be living? No. Nope. Cool. Someone like Picasso or oh. Salvador Dali, right. I think I would just really quirky people right. and I would love to just sit down and have a chat with a famous artist. If it had to be living, someone like Johnny Depp could be pretty cool though oh, at yeah. the same time too. <laughs> yes, That'd is this cool. when we tell people how much, um, who liked you at the show? Uh, Nick Jonas. <laughs> Nick Jonas. Nick, Nick Jonas. Jonas was sweet on Rachel. Oh. <laughs> Back off, she has a boyfriend. <laughs> anyway, here's my question. While in college, you had uh, you did study abroad in Slovenia, mm -hmm. uh, so that is true. Um, can you say talk of the town in their native tongue? No, I can't. It's one of the hardest languages you'll ever learn. It's a combination between uh, Russian, German, and Italian. Oh. And so I hardly remember, I remembered like one word and that's Havala and that's thank you. Oh. All I could say was Havala. Havala. <laughs> and I even said it wrong. It's such a hard language to learn. I wish I could though. We'll take Havala, we'll take that. Um, if you could only listen to one song the rest of your life, what would it be? The one song you had to be stuck with. That's really tough. Uh, can I pick like an artist? Sure. Okay, because I don't know if I could do just a song, but I really love Lana Del Rey. I think she's fantastic. Smooth. She's, yeah, a little bit jazzy mm -hmm. and really kind of artsy. And mm. But I couldn't pick like just song. one song. That would be torturous, I think, for the rest of your life. <laughs> for the rest of your life. <laughs> 
I'd have to go with an artist, and that would be Lana Del Rey. All right. <laughs> if, uh, if you had to take a guess, how many of the Miss states in the Miss America pageant have tattoos? Um, I would say maybe 15%. There you go. All right, the final question here. Which name sounds better to you? Which has a better ring to it? Mm. Mrs. Rachel Bramer or Mrs. Rachel Brockman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like scared to answer this question. Can I say like neither? <laughs> Sorry guys. I Actually, tried. I think that is the right answer. Can we go with like Mrs. Rachel Depp or Mrs. Mrs. Rachel, Rachel Depp. Jonas? Jonas. Okay. All right. <laughs> You guys are trying to get me. <laughs> Tried. And it didn't work. No, it didn't work. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> well, thank you for putting up with us and our questions. Thanks for having me. Oh yes. my gosh, Rachel's so great. And you're going to represent our state for nine more months, right? So do tell, how can people follow you? Yes, so one of the things that they can do is follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Miss America MN. Or you can look me up on Facebook. It's just Miss Minnesota, Rachel Latif, and you'll find me. As long as you search Miss Minnesota, you'll find me. Well, and how could we miss you? Anyway, thanks for coming <laughs> in today. Yes, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much. Congra <laughs> congratulations. Yes, again. congrats and continued success. All right. We're going to take a quick break and come back. Uh, this gal right here has a, uh, a Miss Crock-Pot recipe going on, worthy of a Miss America Crock-Pot, <laughs> if there was a Miss America Crock-Pot pageant <laughs> contest. That should be a talent, you know? That could be an talent. I could. You can do virtually anything with the talent as long as you're passionate We've heard. about it. We've seen. Oh, she's, <laughs> and she is passionate about it. I think we could start I something gotta try normal. this. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see it when we come back. Come to know your Dakota County Pleasant Hill Library, where browsing for books is only the beginning. Whether you're 1 or 101, you'll come to know anything and everything. Come to talk about good books. Move to the music. Come to meet local celebrities and popular authors. Enjoy puppet shows. Create a work of art. And write your own story. You'll come to know anything and everything at the Dakota County Pleasant Hill Library at 1490 South Frontage Road in Hastings. Or come to know your library on the web at www.dakotacounty.us slash library. Or find us on Facebook, the Dakota County Pleasant Hill Library, where browsing for books is only the beginning. Welcome back, and uh, we're back to our talent portion of our show, right? Yes, exactly. Thank goodness we bypassed the swimsuit. Yeah. <laughs> for a whole That'd host totally of different reasons. Show. For a whole host of reasons. But this part of our show is called What, what a Crock. A crock. Um, we are, of course, in the month of October, and if you're like me, Oktoberfest is, um, everything's Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest. Yes. Do you even know what Oktoberfest means? All I know is it's in October, and it's a fest. It's a fest. It was originated in Munich, Germany, hmm. and it, I think it's like a 16-day uh, celebration. And, you know, I'm an Irish girl, but I'm married to a, a nice German man, so I, I try to embrace our... German roots as well. So we are going to... Very international of you. Yes, so we're going to have a crock pot recipe today that's going to involve a little Oktoberfest beer. And that, doesn't this just sound hideous? It's called Harvest Pumpkin Ale. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that'd be my kind of beer, but <laughs> we'll go with it. Okay, excellent. Well, I tell you what, so we are going to make a nice little Oktoberfest uh, yum. meal. Yum, and yum. again, easy, easy, easy. We're going to start off with a what third, I gotta do? Drink the beer? Is that what I gotta uh, do? In a second you will. How's okay. that? You can take a swig of it. We're gonna start off with a third of a cup of brown sugar. And right. then from there, we're gonna add a third of a cup of honey mustard. And again, I always have to turn these labels around because, because why? We don't have because sponsors. Because we're not sponsors. <laughs> we could just more. show them and just send them a bill is what we, we should do. Yeah. Okay, so get your whisk out. I brought you a whisk today. Do you own one of those in Cannon Falls? I do, yes. You do? Yes. Very impressive. It does exist in okay. my kitchen. So you want to um, you want to whisk that in just a second. Well, not quite yet, friend. <laughs> Put it in wow, one I was all ready. I was mentally prepared to whisk, and then you. Yeah. Okay, so Oktoberfest, we're going to celebrate with some little beer, and um, I think this might be the first time there's beer in the high school. Sorry. Right. 
yeah. <laughs> here. Uh, I'll give you the, the honor of opening that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to go for it. All right. So then we take a can of... For the record, of, yes? she brought it in. I did. We take a can of ale. Oop. Okay. Is this your first rodeo? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So take that... Uh, Dump, it, dump it in, dump it in. So then we have a can of beer, and then oh no, see now now you can do some whisking. Okay. Oh my gosh, That's look at that. And you know what? I want to say thank you for these great GoPro cameras or this. Uh, this feels like a real kitchen actually. It does. So that's kind of. Uh, look at that. Yeah, whisk. Go fast, faster. Whoop 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 whoop. Good job, good job. I like look your hat that. though. You're wearing it kind of like a beret. I don't know what that uh, means. I don't know if we should go that way, huh? Yeah. But it looks oh. great. Ho oh, oh, ho, hello everyone. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna put in a can of, or a jar actually, of sauerkraut. Wow, the whole jar. You know, again, this is just such a German recipe. Yeah, it's very German. Yes. All right, we'll plop that baby in. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. Oh my gosh, that is not coming out very easily. All right, so then, and then would you be so kind? I'm actually using. You're using it, so I can. Here, can't. I'll using this. There you cut go. that into about four inch chunks, and that is just some nice four, um, oh, okay. sausage. Some good old German sausage. Throw that baby in when you're done. Okay, so here's a can of sauerkraut. Do you like sauerkraut? Oh yeah. Even though it's sour. I love the sour. Love did the I kraut. say to put it in yet? Uh, yeah, you did. Sure. <laughs> Go with that. Okay, so those bad boys are in, and then we are going to take a take two cut up onions. I did the liberty of cutting onions uh, because, you know, I, I hate to see you cry. Question. Okay, I just, yeah. All right. And so then we'll, we'll take them apart just a little bit as we put them in. But I did a yellow and I did a, um, a red onion just because I think it makes it prettier. There you go. Look That's that. it. Look at this. Voila, voila. Yep. I'll let you do the honors. There we go. Now there we put go. the cover on and that's it. And we let this uh, go on low. Don't do it on high. Do it on low for low. probably five hours. Five hours. No peaking. No peaking. Yeah, no peaking, Curious George. Mm -mm. No. All right. No. Yeah, and that's it. And uh, four to five hours later, well, five hours, let's say, five hours on low, you will have a wonderful Oktoberfest. Uh, you'll actually get some German beer. You can celebrate. You can invite the gang over. And that's it. Happy Oktoberfest. If you're German, it's a great heritage. Sounds good. Not Smells as good, good as being Irish, but, but you know. I'm yeah. a little disappointed. We got to do uh, wait five hours. Yeah, you have to wait five hours for that. It's, that's kind of the way it goes. Yeah. What a crock. Yeah. It is the way it is. Sorry. It is the way it you is. okay? But I'll recover, recover in five hours. Yes, I'll recover. five hours. That's it. Enjoy. Well, enjoy the fall. Embrace the fall because uh, what's coming next in the wintertime, we're not so happy about. But that's <laughs> it for us today. My name is Mo. And I'm Tom. And we are so happy you took the time to watch Talk, Talk of, of the, the town. town. See you next time. See you next month.